Guys, we're back. Still here. We're back. What a great start for the show that, A, again, the garbage truck is trying to back its way out of my neighborhood again. That's okay. There's so, a UPS truck outside my house. Yeah. I'm still waiting yeah. for my Lego to show up. I'm not going to lie. That's a, that's fantastic. I got mine yesterday. <laughs> like, for the last few days, I've just been, like, permanently perched on my window like a hawk waiting for my Lego to get here. And, uh, Daniel, you tried to order some Lego, too, right? But it was on back order? Yeah, um, you know, I'm just gonna jump. I'm just gonna bite the bullet, man. I'm just gonna buy the bo- Batmobile. That's what I always wanted. What were, what were the things you tried to order but were back ordered, my friends? So I did this thing where I was gonna finish marking and reward myself with Lego. So I was gonna get Slave One, the uh, Jedi Starfighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm probably leaving it at that, but then I found out they were all back ordered. I'm like, I, I don't know if I'm gonna wait until July for this. You know what's really funny? I just happened to have ordered some Lego, and I got the Hanikin's Jedi Starfighter Bastard. and Slave One. <laughs> everything Daniel wanted. I know. So, this might be the Lego that you wanted. And yeah, I finished every single set in one day, because I was that. Slave One's sick, eh? That's very nice. You can see Boba Fett's in there. Uh, he's backwards because I forgot Slave 1 flies like that. So that's a bit of a problem. But uh, it's nice to see that the Lego is spreading. Yes. Alex, I've noticed that you've moved your setup to the other side of the table, hasn't I'm you? I'm trying to get the light on my face. Um, I'm going to throw a quote from Professor, our Professor Gary Gould. Yeah. Uh, if you're glistening, no one's listening. Okay? You know, you should, you should move. <laughs> Instead of that glorious picture of what player is that in the background? Alexei Ponikarovsky. Okay. Yes. Instead of Alexei Ponikarovsky, you should instead move all of the Lego over so we can see that. <laughs> okay, maybe next episode. I would. I think that's a very good idea. Uh, but today it's a new episode of Bizarre Adventures, and we're back to me for this one. My last few have been what? What was my first one? It was Jurassic. What was my first Bizarre Adventures? I can't even remember. Uh, oh, yeah, my God. I'll find out. You guys keep thinking. I'll go check. It's time that we finally go to the heart and soul where the name Bizarre Adventures come. And I have given you guys the homework to watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, specifically uh, Part 3 Stardust Crusaders and the Dio's World arc, a.k.a. Uh, the last arc in the series. I have the of- answer. What's the well? Yeah, what was my first bizarre adventure? Our first bizarre adventures. We did it three months late, what or four months? I don't know. Um, Star Wars. Star yeah. Wars episode. Nine. Oh yes. Mm. And if you want to watch our review, well, I think a good little teaser is we completely forgot we did the review. So, <laughs> talk if about that tells movie. you anything about the movie, okay? But it was a fun episode. That's what I liked about it. <laughs> it, was. it was. I kept looking. The more I look back on the, that trilogy, like I don't hate them. But I, I'm realizing how much it undermines the original sex. Yeah, that's Especially what pisses me off. Finishing Clone Wars, and you look at the ending of it. Daniel, finish it, please, so we can I talk. Yeah. He's still um, in season one. You want him to finish it. Yeah. yeah. Hurry up. Um, don't skip any episodes. Uh, unless it's the droid rescue one. You don't need to care about that one. Okay. But, yeah, we're, we're looking at JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Part 3, Stardust Crusader, Dio's World. It's the climax of... Uh, of, of part three of JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. And this is probably, I've talked about JoJo's a few times, but this is one of the most popular anime manga series of all time. And it's known for being just that bizarre. So I want to ask you guys first off, what did you think of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Dio's World. The first by the JoJo's we're going to be watching. There I go. Uh, some technical difficulties there. I think Dio tried to use the world to stop us talking about this episode. But, I mean, it was it was useless. Or he would say, muda, muda, muda. Oh, so freaking fun. Uh, yeah, so anyway, Daniel gave us his thoughts. He liked it. Well, he may give this you have to tell, tell us, say it again. I couldn't hear a single thing Daniel said. Wow. Daniel, tell us again what you loved about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure so far. Um, It was bizarre. Um, a lot going on. Um, I guess, like, yeah, when you go in with that fresh perspective you don't know what to expect so it took me a while to be like okay, who's is who is who what are the names um yeah what we said before it was really loud i didn't expect to like i was wearing like noise canceling headphones with these episodes like late at night and i did, i forgot the amount of yelling there is in anime yeah but really cool fights um i didn't re- I, I don't know why like it's such a 
fun name to a JoJo's Bizarre Adventures that you didn't expect it to be that violent. Oh no, 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 yeah. no! Like it's a pretty nuts series. One second someone's like smiling, the next like there's like blood everywhere. Yeah, Jojo has an array of knives in his stomach. Yeah, one little thing uh-huh. I kind of really liked was when they're uh, fighting on the street and like the little details where he just shifts, he hits the one cat, and then. <laughs> like everyone is eating just kind of like shifts and like what became like a fun night just becomes like a disaster because like yeah. all their hands are placed in different places and i just like was like well that's like like such a small moment but like such a small amount of like detail yeah. to that that i'm like yeah i really appreciated that mm-hmm. most cool characters like these guys are, like all intense but you know they they're guys i would be i would be happy watching in a full series we will get to them later, and you talk about that. One of the highlights of Star Wars Crusaders uh, are the Crusaders themselves. Alex, your thoughts on uh, on this little little taste of JoJo's? It was it was interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I've to be honest, I've never watched anything anime before, so that was kind of my first <clears throat> um, taste of of anime. I thought it was interesting. It interesting. never it, no, not in a bad way. I feel like. That's not what the point I was trying to get across. It's it was completely new for me, right? Um, it just never, uh, I guess, something that I got into when I was younger. So, watching it now is just completely. It was going in completely new, but it, it was interesting in a good way, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I think it was kind of. Th- there was a lot of in. I think we watched four episodes. It was very like, sarcastic a lot of the time. Which kind of kept me going back because that's I'm sarcastic sometimes or most of the time or all the time, and so it just kept me coming back to that. So I thought it was funny in that way. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll talk about the character. That's a, for some context who you don't know. Star Wars Crusaders is basically the story of these these group of friends, and they're going to track down an each an evil ancient vampire by the name of Dio. And Dio has basically been fighting this Joe Star. That's the name of like the main family in the series. And he's been fighting these Joe Stars, you know, for hundreds of years now. Starting off with Joseph's grandfather and Jotaro's great grand great great grandfather, uh, Jonathan. That takes place in part one of the series, available on Netflix along with part two and three. You can all check it out. Now Dio is the guy, the blonde dude who can stop time. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the most famous villains in anime. And then you have Jotaro, who is the big muscly dude with a cool hat who goes good grief all the time and has the purpley punchy boy called uh, Star Platinum. So uh, you asked what the stand was. It's very difficult to explain, but the way people kind of say a stand is like a manifestation of your soul, it's basically a superpower. So Jotaro can just punch really hard, and somehow he learns to stop time. No one really knows why. It's basically a me. You know the part where Jotaro's like, oh, so it's the same kind of stand as Star Platinum? Yeah. That's just like a meme on its own. Like, oh, Jotaro's about to die. I have the same kind of stand. And just go, like, Jojo's is full of memes. Just absolutely full of it. Okay, so I believe it starts off with the scene when... Polnarev, the French dude with the like the tall white hair. Yeah. He's trying to go up to Dio on the stairs, and Dio keeps stopping time and putting him back down. Did you guys get what was happening there? Uh, I thought it was just no. like no. You think it was funny? A little bit, yeah. I thought the the world like wasn't was like his own realm of like he could just control it like like. Like in a creepy way. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I, that's what I thought it was. I thought it was very. Uh, have you seen Doctor Strange? Yes. It. I felt like it was very Doctor Strange esque in a way. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to explain it, but it's very that type of thing. And you know, it, when you and if you've seen the end of the first Doctor Strange, he just gets the guy to keep repeating what he's saying over and over and over and over and over again, and, f- and he's just saying, "Man, you're not moving." He's like you. St- you stay in the same spot. You're going. If anything, you're going down. Mm-hmm. And he's just confusing him, and it and it gets. It just makes it funny. That's fair. It is kind of like you just don't know what the hell is happening here. Like you know something's up with Dio. Like, it's a this great is- setup. Mm-hmm. And like, like the that. whole the Crusaders spent forty like. 40 plus episodes trying to get to him and you know he has a stand and you know it's going to be intense 
So let me let me ask you this because the first real shock is there's a character Kakuin. He's like the redhead with the green uniform, right? Yeah. And what's very really interesting is the second half of Stardust Crusaders. You know what? You don't know actually see a lot of Kakuin. His eyes get like scraped down. He's in the hospital. So he only has one really big fight in the second half before he fights Dio. And we're going to look at it with the Darby stuff. It's stuff in a few weeks, right? So I want you to imagine that we haven't seen a lot of Kakuin. He's a really, really big fan favorite. He's about to fight Dio. You know he's not the main character, so he's not going to win. But he has this awesome setup. He's a really intelligent character. He's put this web on, and he dies in a second. As you guys, like, you haven't watched a lot of JoJo's, obviously. You haven't watched any except for this. So when you first saw Kakuin get bodied by Dio, what was going through your mind? I thought it was funny. He's like, my f- injuries are fatal. I'm like, man, there's a hole in your stomach. Fatal's <laughs> is there, fatal isn't the word to describe this. Whatever's worse than fatal, that's the word you're looking for. <laughs> like, uh, He's a... Uh, they did. They, they said some things during the episodes. I'm like, man, it's either really messed up or it's just like, what are you talking about? And that was one. I'm like, man, there's a hole in your stomach, and you're not gonna live through this, okay? Just to be clear. So, yeah. in less than a second, you got a hole punched in your stomach, sent across the city, and now you're dead to the water tower. And, like, the blood is coming out, like, mixing with this water. Like, you, you're so dead, man. Yeah, like, blood's I feel so pouring bad. out. Like, it's it's pouring out almost at the same rate water's just flushing out behind him. Mm-hmm. You're, in, you're pretty much dead. If, if Fatal is not the word to describe your injuries. It's an interesting, interesting part. Yeah, like, it's kind of, I don't know if it's an oxymoron, but it's like he was conscious of himself to the end yeah of things like he was still talking like a bunch while he's like yeah well you know this is it and it's an interesting thing because they don't you know we get his origin story about who like you know i guess from what we watched we saw that small step about when he was a kid yeah yeah and i'm like okay hard anyone yeah i didn't i didn't even know like I don't know. It's a character worth exploring, I think, because, like, we get that segment, and then when I think you give that throwback, I would think it kind of would go two ways in the plot. Either he's important and he stays on, or he does something very relevant for the rest of the team. Mm-hmm. And like, okay, I went there. And you can tell, like, Kakuin sacrifices there, because that's how he exposed after he, like, sends the thing to dent the clock tower, that that's how Joseph's able to figure out, like, oh, crap. He can stop time. So I remember, like, also one of the biggest, like, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to mention JoJo memes a lot, is the use of the world. Okay, did you guys watch this in English or Japanese, by the way? I watched it in Japanese with English subtitles, like you told me. Same here, yeah. Okay, good. Because, like, in anime, there's always the English versus Japanese debate. And uh, JoJo's, I think, has a really good English voice actor, but Dio's Japanese voice actor is just a whole nother level. So the first time when Joseph's like, Jotaro, Zawaldo, and all that, and then Dio comes down, and we really get to see the world used for the first time. How'd you like it? Because it's so, it, first of all, the sound effect is so sick. Yeah. And like the way he, like, Zawaldo! Woo! It's a very loud series. I didn't realize that when all this stuff is going on. Like I'm like, I should lower my uh, my headphones. Yeah. It's like a bass drop. Like, yeah. It's intense. There's a lot of talking too. Like it's it's like no one stops talking in this in this show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's just a stream. Just, is boom, 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 boom. Just from left and right, everyone's just yeah. nonstop talking. One of the biggest jokes is Dio can only stop time for nine seconds, but he can stop and read the Bible if he really wanted to. Yeah, that confused me the entire thing. I'm like, man, they've been stopped like for 15 seconds. Like, what's going on here? Did you get your stopwatch out and be like, Dio, man, halfway through that speech, you should be dead right now. No, yeah, no. he's like, I saw. Thought- it's not that. It's like, man, like. I can just tell this is longer than three seconds. I can tell this is longer than ten seconds. I admit, like, 
when he fights Joseph and then like he, he's casually walking Dio and he's like I still have five seconds yeah. oh, wait, wait, hold on hold on wait, wait, when he's, he fights Jotaro Joseph's the dude he just throws the knife into his throat yeah yeah like, the first time he fights Joseph like where he where he throws the knife but like it's not in yet and then he's just casually walking and he's like I still have five seconds and he's like I could probably like when I have a get more power I have like a minute an hour like here and there, but I'm just like, wow, like this is have like yeah, it's true. Like I agree with Alex, it's been like three minutes already in this scene. Oh, yeah. are they human or are they not human? Okay, Dio is a vampire. No. Everyone else yeah. is human except uh, okay. the dog, but you know, the, yeah, the, everyone else is just a, a normal human. Okay. Uh, did you guys watch the opening at all? The opening. Yes. Part. The opening song. No, I skipped the intro. Daniel, you, you did? I did, yeah. You watched it. Okay. Here's the thing. Did I miss something? That that Daniel will know because he watches he's watching <laughs> Vangelion. With anime, you have to watch the opening. For each episode. No, no, you just have to get a sense for it because see what's really interesting is for the last episode they actually changed the intro. And if you watch the the intro as itself, yeah. it actually yeah. shows you how all the characters die. It's like Kakuin's there and the emerald splash webs around him. Joseph's okay. reaching out, looking at time. There's actually in the last one, you can see there's a shot of Jotaro's arm and it twitches to foreshadow he can stop time in that. So it's, you know, it shows Paul Narev chasing after the, the other two characters who save his life. It's actually really, really interesting. And it's catchy as hell. Yeah. It's so good. So, I so good. I didn't listen to it. I, I'm sorry. I think you need to go back and do that. Uh, more talk on characters. What do you guys think of Jotaro? Because he's uh, he's actually based off Clint Eastwood. The more oh, like... Oh, okay, yeah, I kind of got that. The uh, yeah. the mundane... I can see that. Not mundane. Yeah, like the monotone voice. The... Uh, the, the I don't like the... What, how to describe it? Like The calmness. He, yeah, he would grunt. Ugh. Ugh. Like, I don't care about you. I just want to beat you up. Yeah. yeah, and then he tried to light someone on fire. What the hell? He was going to light him on fire. I know I'm skipping ahead, but I don't feel bad. Um, <laughs> he literally was going to light someone on fire. Yeah. I think you've gone a little too far. Oh, I mean, with Joe Turo, he, uh he's pretty funny, this Joe Turo. He doesn't have a lot of personality, but like it's the subtleties of his character. It's People dark humor. Yeah. People think he's he doesn't have personality, but it's just... He like you can tell at his core he has respect for his family and that's actually Jojo's weakness throughout the entirety of Jojo's. Um, I don't know if you guys are gonna watch it, but like the end of part six of the series, it's actually his undoing is his family and the care for his daughter, and he, it, it kills him. Right? It's it's pretty intense. And Jojo, everyone loves him. In fact, Clint, Clint Eastwood, the guy he's based off, actually is a fan of, of Jojo. So wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, Clint was a fan of me. Yeah, I know, right? He's so. Yeah. Sp- and another, the last character I really want to ask you about is, of course, the man himself is Dio. Charisma. A.K.A. He's hand- Thanos. The ultimate big bad. The big baddie boy. The big baddie boy, baddie boy. Mm-hmm. With all the charisma, doesn't care, throws a throws a road roller at Jotaro. <laughs> His ultimate attack. If you watch the, uh, the English version, instead of just yelling road roller, he makes a really Kind of, I'm gonna roll all over you. But what did you guys think of Dio? Because he's people love Dio. He's literally Thanos. I think he's more personality than Thanos, though. No man, I he like... has the personality of Thanos. Yeah, it's the like that thing... classic. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say the only thing that they don't have in common is that he doesn't want to wipe out half of the population. <laughs> I think he'd just rather make them his followers. Neither, oh, yeah, neither of them care. No. Mm-hmm. What are you going to say, Daniel? Oh, um, I don't remind me of, like, classic Bram Stoker's Dracula, like, from the novel, where it's a more sophisticated vampire. It's not like the rugged... Like, you know, it's going to still do horrible, horrible things, but it's still going to do it with a smile. Yeah. Because uh, the, the first part of JoJo's is based off the kind of Dracula stuff, so, like, Dio's character has always kind of been that. Like the I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it, well, if you watch the series from the start, you would. You would. Good old Dio. He's, uh, like, yeah, he's got the charisma. There's this really weird thing with Dio that, like, 
you feel if you find out in later parts is like he was a big womanizer he's even got some kids which is like okay that's kind of weird I, I don't know if they i can't remember if they mentioned it but did, do you guys remember what they said about dio's body something about i don't know so like something about like they had to get it from somewhere or like it, it's his, not his own body it's not okay so yeah his body itself is actually jonathan joe stars Joseph's grandfather, but at the end of part one, like Dio gets his head chopped off, and like him and G- like Jonathan end up in the ocean, so he steals his body, and then you realize, wait, wait, so he's had kids, but he used his old like friend's body, and it gets really, really weird, and then you think, yeah, this is definitely anime. Yeah, a little bit. But, it's like the Terminator. Yes, he is very Terminator like. He's pretty. Yeah, I, I, I like if anything about Dio that you gotta admire. It's just uh, like the man does it. He's confident. He's confident. Yeah. Can I tell you something Thanos. funny? Yeah. Can I tell you something funny? Okay, so when you first said Joe Bizarre, Joe Joe's Bizarre Adventures, mm-hmm. and I went in blindly in this, like again, <laughs> like I said, um, I thought they were going on adventures looking for treasure. <laughs> No. <laughs> because like Joseph is wearing all the khaki, right? Yeah. So I'm like, all right, like yeah, these are guys are like, and then when they said like the vampire part, I'm like, wait, wait a minute, what? Yeah, I, th- I thought this was like an homage to like Indiana Jones. <laughs> well, okay, so I want to ask you guys something. Um, I want you to guess without telling me, because of course, again, this is only this was animated this decade or last decade, like the 2010s, right? But as it's an anime, uh, an anime, it was actually based off a of manga, of course, adapted from one. I want you guys to guess what year the manga was first released for this part of JoJo's. And maybe it can give you some sort of, like, thingy of why this is based on the way it is. I feel like it's really old simply because of the way you asked the question. Hmm. Uh, 1975. 75? What are you saying, Daniel? Uh, it's a toss-up between 1947 and 1964. Okay, okay. I think JoJo started in the 70s, so calm down. It's not okay. 80s. or the 80s, not Adam. Um, the manga. So Stardust Crusaders was starting in March 89 to April 92. Okay. Just so wow. you know. So uh, and yeah, it took this long to get a real adaptation for it. All right. So going into the main fight, we get Dio, we get Jotaro. It starts off with the badass lines of. Oh, are you approaching me? Well, I gotta get closer if I'm gonna kick your ass. And then they have their first little show of strength, and um, it's the whole like muda 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 ra 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 ra. Yeah. I think like I think that's the moment you first realize, oh crap, this is a real anime fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something to adjust to. You're not used to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another so- thing about the show. <laughs> Is that to be honest? There's some cheesy lines in this in this show. You just Adam just said one right now um, about. Are you, well, are you you're approaching me? I got like a closer to kick your ass. Yeah, and then I think later on he's like, if this was a Western movie, uh, well, <laughs> what did he say? If this was a Western movie, uh, it would be who's the fastest gunslinger? I'm like, what? Yeah. You just full, said that full sentence. <laughs> you could have cut that down into like maybe half that sentence. And you said, who's the fastest gl- gunslinger or something? I don't care. But he's like, if this was a Western movie. <laughs> That's what I like. It's like they add the like the context to everything they have to say. <laughs> they, they, there's a bad habit of that. There was a character in um, parts one and two named... Named uh, Speedwagon, fantastic character. And in fights, he would just like he was kind of like an announcer. He's like, and Buddy's using his hormone to pull this ability off against the opponent. It was Robert E.O. Speedwagon, one of the best characters in the series. People love him. And yeah, it, it, there's a lot of that in JoJo. It's pretty, um, it's insane. The narrator has some has some good stuff too that happens a lot. What city uh, does this play, t- take place in? So the series starts in Japan and it's like a forty day journey and they end up in Cairo, Egypt is where the final fight. Yeah. So like they go through like India and all that stuff. It's it's based off that what's that famous story of like Buddy travels around the world in like a hundred days or something? It's uh it's based off of that. Uh so by the way, that first part of like exchange with the punchy boys, yeah. Muda 
means useless. So it's like useless, useless, useless. And ura 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 is like it's like saying take that and that and that and that. Yeah, I had the yeah. subtitles on. I, I yeah. There's no way I would have understood that without the subtitles. Yeah. I don't speak don't, Japanese. Like what? even a, <laughs> like the English version, like it's obviously it's like those stand cards are a signature of the series, but it's very it's easy to say muda 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 muda, but it's very difficult to quickly say useless 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 you can't do it right. Yeah. And ura ura sounds a lot cooler than take that and that and that take that, and that. Take that take that take that. Like even and in the that. yeah, like, even in the English, like I think they did the useless useless thing a few times. <laughs> When he throws the knife and he does the muda, even in the English, the guy was like muda, 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 and all that, right? Yeah, that was so, cool there. So yeah. I have a question. Yeah. All that damage they caused in Cairo, Egypt. Who's gonna pay for it? This is my. This is probably one of my pet peeves in a lot oh. of movies. Okay. Um, <laughs> Joseph is, is super rich, by the okay. way. He's super, so he's and gonna they, pay uh, for it. He's a big real estate mogul. Also, okay. the guy I mentioned, Robert Speedwagon, he started the Speedwagon Foundation at the end of part one. Yeah. It's like super rich company. So like that and, jo- and Joseph, it's not a problem. They're going to repair gonna it. Because that's yeah, my issue. You know, you look at all these movies, like you look at like Transformers or like Avengers or whatever. Yeah. Story, they just destroy cities like for fun. At least in, in Avengers, right, they in, in Spider Man ho in um the first Spider Man movie they get like Wheaton's character to kind of explain like the construction part of that. But like yeah, Transformers is the worst for that because the amount of destruction Holy. in those movies Or old fashioned Power Rangers, you know, they destroy yeah, the city every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and crazy. It's just magically rebuilt. Oh. We're coming out with this movie, New York City. And that's another thing. New York City is always the city that gets destroyed. I know. How yeah, about that... we change it up? How about destroy Toronto? I'd yeah. love to see that. Or the GTA, you know. The GTA. They hit up yes. Richmond Hill. Markham. Vaughn. You... They go I to Pickering. Cameo. Pardon? I think you just want a cameo in one of these movies. I would love a movie to openly say like Markham. The closest yeah. one the closest one I think I've ever seen was Etobicoke. Etobicoke. Yeah. Etobicoke. Sorry. Etobicoke. That's how we that's how they pronounce it in uh that that TV sh- T- Netflix series, sorry. Etobicoke. E- I mean it, it is dumb dumb that it's pronounced Etobicoke when you've got coke at the end of it. You know that's what? always you know what I mean. What if like the Transformers showed up in Pickering and just destroyed Pickering. What you're telling me that wouldn't be? Adam would use a stand. <laughs> <They're>, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Oh, I mean I for the escape. movie. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's not a lot. They could fight in the Rouge. I mean, that'd be cool. But Perfect. like, there's there's not much going on over here. Also, a big a big cliche is also the Golden Gate Bridge getting destroyed. That's a that's a cliche. Like, you can't have the Golden Gate Bridge in the movie without it. Like the moment you see it, you think it's gone. It's oh dead. yeah, in that, I think it's no. I think in the last Godzilla movie, he swam under it, and everyone was like, "What are you doing?" Okay, how about your... how about this one? How about this one? How about they Fast and Furious? How about they do a race on Young Street? It's like a it's a pretty long road. I think it'll fit. They yeah. did that for Suicide Squad. They did in Toronto. Yeah, Suicide oh, Squad. I had no uh, idea that was in Toronto. So we got a movie, and it was complete. No, no, oh. but listen, it ha- they have to say it's Toronto. Oh, okay, right? okay, yeah, you like, can see oh, Young we're Street. we're racing on Young Street, and they're just yeah, ripping you can see it. A- <laughs> you can see the uh, SLC in it, like, they passed by Ryerson <laughs> on it, it's pretty funny. We made suicides. It was like the Batmobile that. chase. <laughs> yeah, if you look at it, actually, a lot of films are like, I think it's for the tax stuff, they're filmed in Vancouver, like, a lot of yeah. Final Destination, Cabin yeah. in the Woods was filmed there, like, yeah, if you go to Vancouver, it's like it's like Vancouver and like Iceland and Greenland. Yeah. Get all the filming locations, right? It's like you, you can't I don't think you can watch like a Viking movie or something without seeing Iceland or Greenland. Same with Game of Thrones too. That and like Aberdeen or insane. Um, if you want to talk about insane though, how about someone's ultimate attack being dropping a road roller while yelling road roller and throwing it on a dude? Destroys the mystery. Yeah. Yeah. I, also, they did that a lot, though, right? Every time they were gonna, they were gonna do something, 
they just yell what they're going to do. Or Dio is explaining his thought process out loud. I'm like, are you kidding? I'm not going to get close to you because this, this, and this. I'm like, man, you don't say that stuff out loud. That helps no one. Helps the audience. I don't know. Yeah, but you know what I mean. I knew, I knew too much, to be honest, yeah. Well, there was a part where, where um, <coughs> excuse me, Dio lost a limb and he asked the girl to bring it back to him. Yeah. <laughs> excuse me, miss. I seem to have lost that. Can I have it back, please? What year was this made? The, like, what, when the anime was made? No, when, like, yeah, yeah, when the anime was made, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'll look it up exactly. Because that line that he said there definitely would would not fly today. Um, it was animated in 2014. Wow, I'm so surprised that line flew. What did he, okay, well, he first goes, of all. Treat me, he's like, you should be like, um, uh, what the, <laughs> you should be like, um, the hell are they called a flight attendant you need to bring like, he just he's like are you wow you definitely can't that would that not be allowed anime. today okay uh, I, on other shows yes in anime it happens all the time anime is something that it's it's i love it but if if i'm like if i'm like starting to date a girl i wouldn't show them anime until we were very very comfortable with each other and then you start showing someone the that embarrassing stuff sucks though it is. Um, that but for it me is. sucks because I like. It, I look at all the comedy. I we've gone so off track, but that's okay. Um, it's our adventure. I, I, I look at a lot of the comedy movies that I watch, and most of them are not any modern comedy movies. Like I can mm-hmm. list you the ones that I watch, and none of them were made recently. Like the other guys, um, Dodge, have you seen Dodgeball? Yeah. Wedding Crashers. <laughs> Um, Step Brothers, old school, like all these movies were made before. When you can make, have you ever seen Tropic Thunder? Yes. Oh, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. Please, up the flag, man. You're telling me that would fly? Yeah, you. Yeah, no. no. I, I I can't tell you how much I lost Tropic Thunder when I was. <laughs> so and the scene, the first time I saw him take off the blackface, like years for years, I was so confused about oh. what was happening. Apparently, it was supposed to be like. So it was supposed to like make fun of like Hollywood used to do it, but like people just took it as an offensive thing. You're like, <laughs> no, what are you doing? The fact that it was like it wasn't as big a deal then, but imagine if he pulled that off now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> be a staying away. Staying away. He was, uh, he was on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast, and they talked about it. He's like, "Yeah, no way, I could have done that now." He's like, "Even back then, my mom told me not to do it." <laughs> <laughs> it's like no way I like should not do that. All right, well we'll finish off JoJo's with this. Cuz to this day there has not been an explanation how the hell Jotaro learns to stop time. And it's it's so annoying cuz he can just do it at the end of the at the end of the episode. He's like he absorbed his power, I don't know. Yeah, it was uh it was a little weird. Because like, even when he uses it in the future of the series, he always be like, Star Platinum, unleash the world. And it's just like, but man, you don't actually have the stand of the world. Somehow you can just stop time. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. It I was, mean, I'm not explain, but It was kind of weird because I guess we kind of knew, like, if you look at the backstory of Dio and he talks about how he realize he can stop time he's like yeah he thought it was illusion an illusion and it turned out it was real and then that guy i don't remember his name he was there at the beginning of the show they had him in the bag in the bag yeah oh yeah there was a bag yeah and then they say open the open the coffin it was dio's thing vampire Oh, yeah. the little dude! Yes, yeah. the little dude. That was a and cool he, part. That kind of creeped me out. I didn't know about yeah. the, I didn't know the time thing. I yeah. thought there was like a spooky thing. And he explains it. He explains like you have to believe that you can stop time, and that's how you get. That's how you're able to. Um, that's how you're able to stop time for longer. But he only explains that to Dio. So I have no yeah. idea how. Um, how you Yotaru is that his name? Jotaro. Jotaro. Sorry, Jotaro. Jot- Jotaro. 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 
that I don't know how he learns how to stop time. So, hey, he doesn't. Things it's don't so, need to make sense. That's what the best part is. They don't, especially with uh, with these early things of Joe of JoJo's. Honestly, it's it is a batshit show. It really, it's so insane, and it just it like it gets crazier and like part four. Like there are some plot issues with this part of the show, but like when you get to the next one, Diamonds and Breakable, it, it gets a lot better. Like, I love Diamonds and Break. Well, Joe Turo's in it, so is Joseph. Uh, really fun. I want to bring that, that part up again. Because, so, right before this arc, um, what actually happens is, yeah, I mentioned these other two members of the Crusaders die. And it's they fight this guy named Vanilla Ice. Yes, it's based yeah. off of... <laughs> yeah, that, that confused me. I was reading some of the lore. That, that's actually a really big thing in JoJo's. There's a lot of, like, artists and music stuff. Like, there is a, a stand ability in Part 5 called Aerosmith. And, you know, Moody Jazz, um, Golden Experience, there's a lot of that stuff. But when they translate it to English, there's, there's copyright issues. But in Japan, it's fine. Um, it's a fair warning. So, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a council. Anyway, there's this vanilla ice guy. He kills two of the Crusaders right away. Then, you know, Kakuin dies. So, like, there's a very much there's very much a horror um, feeling towards the end of the series. And then we go to Road Rollers and bring me my, my leg, you uh, woman who is a flight attendant to me, or you should be. It very much, it's very JoJo's. Like, there's a part where, um, where this this dude has the ability to like make your face a book, and he can like write something like this guy can speak Italian, and like he can close your face back up. It's man, I cannot explain to you. There's a guy who can take apart and put anything back together, so he gets like a meal of like pasta and reverts it back to like the raw pasta, pasta and like the original peppers. It's so insane. It, it's incredible to think about. Um, but man, I really think Final Fall. Are you Daniel? It sounds like you're gonna watch some more JoJo's. Alex, do you think you will? Honestly, Besides the episodes we're watching in a couple weeks. I might. I honestly, I have so many, so much to get through. I will eventually get to. I have so much. Like we have so much time on our hands. I'm behind on podcasts. Um, I have all these TV series I want to watch, but I will get to JoJo's. People. I'm excited for the written material. Like, I actually, uh, I'm intrigued to see the original written material. Yeah. But I feel you, Alex. I feel you, Alex, that uh, we're getting a lot of time. A lot of, like, the responsibility, real responsibilities are kind of winding down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. done as a TA, hey. by the way. Sorry, I just wanted to say that. Yes. <laughs> Final marks are in. Party. I know, kind of. <laughs> what I want to do now, like, switch to a... Uh, are you going to play Animal I guess, Crossing? I don't have a Switch, but, oh, you know. come on. Man, you if we, one of the people in lines on March 16th no, or whatever? I we, denounced them. I was, I was, I was, I, I, I opposed that. I think we were recording a podcast. Well, yeah. Not? How, how, I think we did it, like, the day afterwards, and I was telling you, like, man, it's worth it. I know it's not. Oh, man. Is it worth it? Is it worth it, Adam? Was it worth yeah, it? it was. Anyway, was Daniel... It? Oh, how about this, Daniel? Trade your freaking three year uh, PS4 in, get a Xbox One, and play with us on NHL. That's good. I don't know, man. But like EASHL team. I haven't beat a Death Stranding yet. No. You know, that's only on PS4. Or, uh, Bloodborne's my favorite game. It's PS4 exclusive. Last of Us, yeah. I still got to play that. Yeah. Oh, the second one's not. Look, they released the official trailer for another trailer for Last of Us Two for some reason, and that is getting a lot of bad PR. Oh my! Wait. Man. So, Adam, we can't pl- get an ESHL team when Daniel gets his Xbox. I t- I'll like- be there, like you know, like Obi Wan is in Episode Five. When you guys are playing, I'll be there. You know, like we like Obi Wan is. He'll be our coach. It'll be like Adam Wild. He'll be our Adam. I, I told. I told you guys the last time what happened the last time I was playing ESA, EASHR, right? Yeah, but it's just gonna be the three of us. Yeah, but I'm not good. So I'm not good. Yeah, but well, I'm, I'm pretty gonna... good. No, I'm not. I don't know. We'll I never be played bad it together. We need to have a tournament again to see who's the better champion. Let me get like. Oh, a... man, do I actually have to buy an Xbox now? No. I mean, exchange your PlayStation. I mean, you, you know what? To be honest, you're about to buy Lego, so. I'm about to buy a three hundred dollar Lego set. So. I'm about to say, think of it like this: Are you gonna spend? <laughs> Hundred dollars on the Batmobile, or put that towards an Xbox. Wait, you're, you're confusing me now. Which one do you want me no, to? No, no, <laughs> don't buy the don't buy the Xbox. The new systems are coming out like within a year, yeah. so uh, don't. That's buy right. 
Well, what I'm, you're asking what I'm asking you to do, Daniel. What I'm telling you is send me $900 so I can buy a 4,000 Lego set. I'm trying to tell you. But. Right. Where are you going to put it? You, you, last episode, you told me that you had no space, and now you want him to buy you a 4,000. Yeah. Let me give you a tour, actually, because like, obviously the table is full. Yeah. Those are my shelves over there. Like I can fit the Star Destroyer. But I have no idea where I'm going to put Slave 1. It's just going to sit here for a while. But, like, I don't know where it's going to go. Excellent set. What? Excellent set. Yeah. I feel like... I was, like, reading articles about, like, that's what a lot of people who, uh... Like, during this uncertainty of, like, school or their job, like, they just end up buying... Like, either it's reading, like, like they're hoarding books, or they're just buying Lego. Man, you know what? I was really emotional making this start, the uh, Anakin ship, because I just love Anakin Skywalker so much, and the end of Clone Wars has got me so down. I was so happy. Like, like it's only like, I think it's, hold on, I have the, the box somewhere. It's like 240 like, pieces, but I think this is my favorite Lego set ever, because it's wow. Anakin goddamn Skywalker. R2's there. It's Anakin. This is where the fun begins. We should watch, you know what? I'm, you know, I'm going to change... The next episode, of, like, remember how my next episode was going to be more JoJo's? Yep. We're changing it. I'm okay. going to that episode to, we're going to make that one Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Okay. I'm so down for that. Yeah, for sure. I was planning to, like, go through the entire saga again. Yeah. Um, so, if any, I forgot, we're still kind of recording, aren't we? For those of you who want to know what the rest of the month looks like, um, we're going to, are we going to make it? This on the tenth, we just want to make that sure. Draft. Sure, you, yeah. On the tenth, we're going to be doing our own Seattle expansion. Then on the thirteenth, Alex has a bizarre adventures. On the seventeenth, that will be Daniel's birthday. We're going to be looking at the two thousand three Mighty Ducks Cinderella run to the finals. Then on the twentieth, we're going to be back with Daniel. Bizarre adventures. We're going to watch Back to the Future. Yes. On the fourth, we're going to be looking at the UFAs. Or maybe we're going to push the 93 playoffs. We'll figure it out. It's one of the two. On the 27th, we are going to not be watching more JoJo's. Instead, we will be watching Star Wars Episode 3. And then third, the 31st will be one of the other UFAs or 93, whatever. We'll, we'll figure, it out, figure it out. The UFAs of 93. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we go, I know Adam really wants to talk about this. Um, so I want you to like, I want you to picture this if you're me, right? So I stay up late. So like on the third, because I know that the last episode of Star Wars Clone Wars is going to come out, um, like in one in the morning on May 4th. Right. So I stay up and watch it. The ending is so heartbreaking that I can't go to sleep. I'm up for like another half an hour trying to figure this out. Right. I was going to watch Revenge of the Sith. On May the 4th, because this is my favorite Star Wars movie, but I was too sad. Also, when I wake up on May the 4th, the first thing I see is a text from Alex saying that, what's his name, Miko Letnin? I don't care. Miko Letnin. Miko Letnin, this great left handed European defenseman that everyone in Montreal wanted. Out of nowhere, signs with the Leafs. And you have everyone on Twitter just, like, Leafs fans just everywhere just bragging about it. Like, they've owned this guy for two months. Like, you just got him out of nowhere. Like, be <sighs> But he's like, supposed Berger, to be very good. That's good. Oh, I'm so happy for you that you have a great player. I, it's, it's not like, my problem that your GM continuously seems to have problems, and then you guys want to say it's not his problem, you know? I, I mean... I, I, and I, I don't want to get into it now, but I read an article, the Athletic article, how the June draft, how a draft in June this year would compl- would completely ruin the um, the rebuild. No, really? I'm gonna find the article, but like, I'm sorry, I don't like. This is a guy you capitalize on. I don't know what you have to do to get him. Like, I'm assuming the teams that. That were out there interested, New York, uh, New Jersey, um, L.A., Montreal. Those were the three teams that were that were said to be interested on him. If I'm Montreal, yeah, I give him nine hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. I give him whatever the hell he else he wants. Like, what was the one issue we talked about this entire year? Um, that left-handed defenseman. Left-handed defenseman. Mm-hmm. 
So I mean, this I, is all I on was, Mark Bergevin. I don't care what I, people say. Well, at the end of it, it was that guy's decision to sign. And I hope he is happy with Toronto because um, I hate him. <laughs> I hate him. I mean, he's still – it's very frustrating. Like, if you, if you went to the Devils or the Kings, I'd be like, yeah, whatever. But you're Montreal. Oh. Like, the Leafs have apparently been in such well regard about, like – Go, like, really going to make an effort to talk to these free agents and that. And I think, like, you're the Montreal Canadiens. Can you not do that, too? This like, is So this is Arpin Basu from The Athletic. Mm-hmm. The headline is, Why a June draft would foil the Canadiens' ability to put the reset in overdrive. Yeah, because there was... So Arpin is, like, the head of Montreal yep. athletic stuff, or athletic... French version. Yes, the athletic French. L'Athletique Montréal. Okay. And he had this big thing that Montreal, of course, have this access of like this, um, sorry, the surplus of prospects that they could maybe, and this is what I said earlier in, in the year, that this could be, they had the possibility to be Montreal's most disappointing offseason because they had the assets to really try and make a move. And now if you do this June draft and all of a sudden Montreal can't do the working, the magic with the picks because no one won't be able to do it because of this, the possibility of the playoffs coming back, then yeah, they, they can't do anything. It's frustrating. Yeah, so this- you're telling me you can't draft players and then trade your prospects. That's not a possibility? No, what I'm saying is if this draft is coming, yeah. we're we're not going to be able to make any deals because who the hell knows what's going on? And plus, like with the playoffs and that, like the draft is when we see a lot of player movement. And Montreal going to be you can't pull off the same moves July first onwards of that you course. can't draft, right? And that's where I think it's going to screw Montreal. And also, the problem Montreal like with the cap now stagnating is now Montreal have to re-sign Brendan Gallagher and Philippe Deneau come July first next season, but now they're eligible for extensions. I mean, oh, I'm that's, so yeah, that's huge. Things are getting worse and worse for Montreal. But to say that because of June, there's a gonna there, there's a possibility that there's a G- draft in June that it completely screws up everything. I don't see how that makes sense. You still, do you still have Thomas Tatar and Jeff Petrie who you can trade and get legitimate assets for? Fine, you can use your 14 picks that you have this year, including a first how many ever seconds draft the players and i guarantee you if this draft is as good as everyone says if you need assets you can trade them you can trade prospects and bring in legitimate assets but to sit here and tell me that it screws up everything and you know we're gonna have to reset again i don't think that's true well they they have plenty of well the problem is for montreal is they have plenty of forward prospects that are coming in the next few years yes the big problem is their defensive prospects, which they have, but how many of them? Romanov will make the NHL last year, but Correct. as we've talked a couple times, he is not going to be a big difference maker in his rookie year. That's not going to happen. Right. So, if anything, I would look at maybe Montreal's trying to build up. Maybe this is the plan. I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong. Is to make a deal to help bolster the defense, right? And I just – maybe they look at it and I, I don't know. Maybe there was a plan at the draft to try and make that move with those assets because drafting isn't going to help your defense is I think the way maybe Mark Bergevin looks at it. Right. But then the question is what are you trying to do? Are you doing a retool or are you doing a rebuild? I think we've had this discussion countless times on the podcast. And yeah. what the hell is he doing? Because no one knows. No He's- one knows. Re- Build on the fly, does Mark Bergevin? Even though everyone else, that's like a retool, right? Even though yeah. no one's, even though like who's done it and won? Uh, no one. Like Chicago's trying to do that, and they just fired their president. <laughs> um, the Kings are trying to do that, and they're anchored by the Dowdy deal. Like you know, Minnesota have been doing whatever Minnesota does for the past few and years. And now right? they've changed. They brought Bill Guerin in. They just fired. Whoever, who was it? Uh, Paul Fenton or Cliff Fletcher? Who was it? Yeah, they, yeah, it was Paul Fenton. They fired and replaced with Garen. And they traded Zucker, which everyone said that's what we're doing. Like that's a lot for him, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, great deal. Right, like they they're they're starting. The thing is, their team is full with players who are I don't. No one has any idea what they are, and they're signed long and they're signed to big deals. Okay, the Jared Spurgeon deal's not bad. Like, it's not good, but it's not the worst thing ever. 
Matt Dumba's not bad. You st- Matt, Doom- Matt Dumba's not bad. You can if I don't think that's a smart move to trade him, but if you want to, you can. You still have Jonas Brodeen. Like, you have guys who are there, but you also have guys who are there and, like, uh, bleh. Right? A lot of mysteries there, like uh, Ryan Donato, uh, Luke Cunning. Like, it's I, like these, if they yeah. can trade Zach Parise and do the Andrew Ladd deals, that, because they're going to get, they were supposed to get who? Kiefer Bellows? Was that the I was excited. Going back? Yeah, I was that excited would have been to see a that. Very good move for the Minnesota Wild. Like, yes, Zach Parise is loved in Minnesota. But his contract does not look good. Not at all. Like it's only half done. Yeah, and to say, oh, we have to take Andrew Ladd for the next couple of years, but we get Kiefer Bellows and however else, like whatever else was going the other way. I think that's another good prospect to add to your to the list of prospects they have. Like they still have uh, the a guy in Russia. Um, what, what's his name? Oh, Kirill, Kirill Kap- Kaprasov. Kaprasov, right? I, and that guy's supposed to be coming uh, either this year or next year. Like, they're doing – they yes, do you want, they put themselves in a really poor position because they were trying to do this retool or re, retool like on the fly. But now they have to hit rock bottom and go back up. And Montreal never hit rock bottom. Or they, they were – yeah, they hit it, but they didn't identify that they yes, should just yes. out there. And so, seventeen, eighteen, my friend, was not a fun year. I was living there, and I went to a lot of those games. Right, it's not fun. But not I think with Montreal, like they're actually hitting on their picks, though. Like I found, like with Minnesota, it just they will take guys that you know you don't know what it is, like because like they're such mid tier picks, or like they're like you don't know what you're getting. Joel Erickson acts a perfect example of that. Yeah. Like that was the guy that was like, everyone's like, oh, he's great, but is he? And now you see him in the NHL and you're like, is he? And you're thinking, like, <laughs> but the problem is, like, you can, like, Daniel, to your point of Montreal hitting on their picks, is it would be great if they did that, but, uh, so it's great that they're doing that, but it doesn't help. Again, I think what Alex is saying here is, is you're not committing to the rebuild and holding on to, you know, your players like Price, Petrie, Tatar, whoever. Yeah. Do you think it's like a tradition type of thing? We're like, it's more of like, these are beloved guys that... I think the, the what his Berg, what Berg version has said is that Price and Weber committed to him. Yeah. Okay, Weber, Weber did it first of all, but he's been he's been the trooper. He's been big enough where you can make him your captain. Carey Price did commit for eight years, and that's Matt. Like, say what you want about the money. Like, I want you to think about how insane a market is Montreal yeah. and what Carey Price has been through since 2005 and mm-hmm. think that he stuck around there. Is and, and Mark Bergevin sees that as we're being loyal. But the problem is, and I want you to look at the Blackhawks and what did loyalty do for them? Yeah. It set them back. So like they were loyal to Kane and Tave saying, we want Saad back. And then you get rid of Panarin, who is like a heart candidate this year, right? So that's that. I think that's the issue that, that Alex has there, and it's a legitimate one. It's, it's probably Montreal's mm-hmm. biggest problem. You're being loyal to guys, and you haven't even won anything. And these are guys on the wrong side of the 30, and each have, I think, at least like seven years left on their deals. Yeah, that's so, my issue. I, I don't know how they're going to move those. Uh, like, yeah, it, I mean, and we've had nothing's impossible. Too. Yeah, yeah. Well, nothing's impossible. I think it's, I think it will be difficult because their deals are so long. I don't think it's a matter of if they're skilled right now. Like, yes, Gary Price isn't the best goalie in the world like he was a few years ago. But he's still a very good goalie. Is he inconsistent sometimes? Yeah. Is the defense in front of him always on their game? No. So you have like there's things I guess to look look at. But man, that deal is so freaking long, and so is the Shea Weber one. And what the hell? Like, what teams are willingly going to say, "Hey, we'll spend the next yeah. seven years dealing with that cap"? Like someone like Anaheim, who's openly said, "Hey, we'll take on extra cap." I don't think they'd be interested in something seven years down lo- for something no. that's seven years down the line. Because like the like, Bacchus one, it's expiring next year. Because really? that's why they took they took the full six million. They didn't. Uh, Boston didn't retain any salary. Yeah. You know, what, they took. Her- they retained a little bit. Like for Montreal, this is I think what Montreal would see as a perfect little hope. Pekka Rene had a Vesna Trophy year at thirty-five. 
So you hope that Munch, that first of all, Carey Price can continue to be a good goalie, which, yeah, not best goalie in the world. Still was pretty damn good if you look at his numbers last year, especially like November onwards, right? Same with the year before. So that's that's a thing first of all you need to look at. If they find that like mix, like you know, like there's always like that balance between you have like those solid veteran guys, but like you still have like those young guys that they're not exactly learning the ropes, but they're kind of yeah. getting to where they need to go. Like you could find that balance, then they could do something. So here's what I think they're they're perfect. This is what I think it looks like Mark Bergerman may be counting on here. And I think this is a bit of a red flag. You have to hope that Shea Weber is like Zidane Char. That he, you know, and, and Shea Weber is a guy who keeps in good shape. But you have to hope that he's continuing to play at a great level. And so far, that looks good for him, right? Mm-hmm. Think that leg injury wasn't as bad as we all thought it would was, okay? You have to see that Carey Price can at least stay as a starting goaltender for this deal as well. Um, you need to try and get him a good backup, which they have not been able to do for six, seven years. And then you need to hope at the same time that guys like Nick Suzuki take step forwards. He probably will. Um, yes, very cut. Kinyami can continue to develop. I think he will. He's only 19, let's remember. Um, you have to hope that next year Cole Caulfield can come in and be fantastic. you got to bet that Brendan Gallagher's body doesn't give up on him, which, I mean, like let's be honest, three, four years, he'll be fine. After that, probably not. You have to hope on Caulfield. you got to hope on Roman. you got to hope on Cam Hillis. There's a lot of hope on young guys, which, yeah, you do in this NHL. But I think, which is, if you want to bet on your young guys, I'm fine with that. It's just, I think the big red flag is now you have to rely on father time not coming to bite your team on the ass, a.k.a. your two biggest stars, right? Right, and, and that's I, the issue. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and Daniel, trust me, no one wants this team, no one wants all that to go well more than me. Again, <laughs> Look behind me to see how much I love this team and Carey Price especially, right? So, but there are legitimate concerns, and there's a lot of red, more red flags than you'd see on the golf course. I, I, and I would even talk about Jonathan Drew, and <laughs> that's another can of worms for another. Day. I think the big biggest issue of what you outlined is that they're relying on father time. Which that's not everyone. The so biggest sorry. issue, and with, and. You know, yes, his injury wasn't as bad as everyone thought it was, or that's what the reports were saying. But what if next season he gets injured? We mm-hmm. know, like, you're in deep, deep, like, a pile of crap right there if and he's injured. A lot, of, a lot of people think, oh, Jeff Petrie plays his best hockey when she ever is gone. But then you got to think, oh, wait, who's after Petrie? And their best right-handed player after him is a 20, 21-year-old Kale Fleury. And, and, oh, young defenseman, look at Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. Doesn't work. I think it's worth it. I think it gets to a point where it's worth it to bet on young guys, but you have to bottom out. Like, And I'm using the Leafs as an example because that's pretty much what they did in 16-17. And they bet on all the young guys. And they bet on Matthews, they bet on Marner, they bet on Nylander, they bet on Kappen, and they bet, or Kappen wasn't there, uh, came towards the end of the season. They bet on Hyman, who was not as young as everyone else, but still young. Connor Brown, right? They, they bet on all these guys to come in and say, we're either going to make the playoffs or we're not. It doesn't, like, it didn't matter. And what I don't think that... say is, like, pain. It's like, growing pains. Yeah, it's like, going to be put- I don't yeah, think I don't think Montreal has hit that point yet where they don't care if they make the playoffs or not because they haven't hit rock bottom. The team the Montreal because they if you think remember the discussion we had at the beginning of the year was that you thought the Canadians were going to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I thought it too. I thought uh, it too. And I think most people thought it I think I'm pretty sure I put them in the playoffs as well. But and so we're halfway through the season and they're they have already gone on one eight game losing streak. They're about to go on another. And we're still now complaining that they should be in the playoffs. Hit oh, rock bottom. But they, they would have won those games if they had won. Remember that famous tweet? Yeah, I mean yeah. they, they lost to the worst team of the decade four times. So twice it, in hope. It, it doesn't. Yeah. You have to hit. I think it gets to. You look at a lot of teams. Like look at what. Uh, let's say Pittsburgh. Two years in a row, they literally just did garbage. And they this, got, this, I'm guessing, about to go the Ovechkin backstrom right here. And Washington. 
Oh, sorry. You said Pittsburgh. Sorry. Shit. Yeah, I was going to say Washington. That was my next one. I don't, I don't know why I, yeah, you were talking Teams about. Teams have hit rock bar. Let's even throw the Leafs in there like, just because mm-hmm. that's what I know best. Blackhawks. The Blackhawks. Taze and Kane. Uh, the Leafs. Matthews. Marner. And even Nylander. But Nylander was, I think he was eighth overall. So a little bit out there. Right? These teams hit rock bottom. They get the really good guys. And they go back. And, right? So you have Yasperi Kotkaniemi, who you drafted third overall. Sure. Second season didn't go as well as everyone thought it was going to go. How, go get another. Just hit rock bottom again. And this year would have been the perfect year to hit rock bottom. Because God forbid, you find you don't get first overall, you don't get second overall. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth are all great players. Like, we did our draft. We had Lafreniere, Byfield, Stutzel, uh, Drysdale, Rossi, Perfetti, Askarov, Holtz, uh, Yaroslav Askarov. Right, like there's all these players who you have the opportunity to go get, but you were so like Bergman was so persistent on making the playoffs when there were so many holes at the beginning of the year. That's my rant on the Montreal Canadiens. Thank you for listening. Uh, anything from you, Daniel, or are we get to wrap up? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just Montreal's always just been interesting for me to watch. So I'll see what they do, but. Whatever happens, like, yeah, it just, they need to kind of do something to either, like, realize, like, hey, what our identity is. But other than that, you know, don't worry, Adam, we're with you, we're with you throughout the, the, through it all. Now more than ever, this team needs to be good. Yeah, Alex and I are Leafs fans. Okay. Yeah, yeah, hop on the bandwagon, Daniel. Hop on the bandwagon. Think about it. Now more than ever, we need a Canadian team who brings in lots of lots and lots and lots of money to be good and make the playoffs. Okay? Uh, you you cut out a bunch there. Oh, you, yeah. you know what? Well, we're, we're still doing it. You know that in, in the Transformers movie, there's like that satellite one that goes... <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> Can you hear me now? That's why you're wearing a hat because you've actually saved the Decepticon logo into your hair. Wow. So, I was yeah. thinking about it. I was thinking All right. About it. Uh, I think that's everything, gay lads. I think so. I like that we could never, like, even for Bizarre Adventure, we got to, like, mention, like, one hockey thing that we go on for a while. Oh, yeah. That's I just wanted to, yeah, Adam just wanted to talk about Miko Lettinen and how upset he was. And I just completely went off on yeah. Montreal. <laughs> Well, at least now we can just talk about him from the least point of view okay, on Sunday perfect. when we do. So I'm assuming we need to use the expansion draft tool that's on Cat Friendly because otherwise yeah, one I'm... of them I'll find one. Don't we got to write it down manually. Absolutely not. Every every team, every years. protected list of every Holy team. Good lord, we're gonna have to be on a Skype call all day. It's gonna be like a a draft day war room. That's fun. You know, we're Actually, already I'd going that day. To, I would love to be in a draft day war room. I'm not going to lie. All right. I'll, pu- I'll put on my suit. <laughs> I'll put the two uh, phones beside me like Kyle Dubas. Man, if, if you guys want to commit to I will dress up. I will put on my Mark Bergeron outfit for – I'm going to do it. That's it. I'm going to dress up fancy for this draft. Okay. And I'm going to oh. pretend that I'm, um, that I'm Ron Francis. I'm going like, to right. dress like – I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'm going to dress like Steve Eiserman, but in his playing days. <laughs> He's going to wear a jersey, bring a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. All right. Well, if you enjoyed today's episode, a mixed bag of content, we talked about anime, and then we talked about some hockey. If you enjoyed this kind of stuff, be sure to, um, let's say you listen to this on iTunes, Spotify, that kind of stuff. You should s- subscribe or follow, whatever you have to do on those sites. Leave a review. What do you want us to talk about in the future? It can be hockey. It can be not. Um, why don't you let us know what route the Habs should take, and uh, you, you tell me how much you love Yes, Barry Cucky, and you smile as well. If you feel like checking out what we look like, you want to see a visual part of this podcast, check out the show's YouTube channel where you can just see all three of our beautiful spa- uh, faces, especially mine, let's be honest here. 
Uh, I went there. And also, be sure to check out the show's Instagram as well as all our other social medias. Uh, check out my YouTube channel, Andre Markov Video, Incoming Lads. Uh, anything else to say, guys? Uh, be sure to listen for Sunday's episode. It's going to be quite interesting. Yeah, the, the war room. War room. Man, we should just have like a header that says war room. And <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Just that banner says the pick is in. I don't know. Man, man, let's do it. All we okay. can. All right. Let's make this a whole ting. Okay. All right. Awesome. We can get like a, a green screen and put like the the Kraken logo behind us and be like Seattle Kraken select from uh, the Toronto Leafs. Whoever they would have available, Zach I don't Hunt. know. Probably not. Zach Zachary Hyman. Probably not. Something like Frederick Anderson because of his deal will be up in their back. Jack Campbell because he's a really nice guy. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. With that. Uh, also, um, tweet at us your Lego if you had any. Why not? 